We would like to thank all of our patrons for your continued support. How do you think? Can you just go a little further? Okay, so I'm here with my buddy Dyer and uh, Camille, Mr. Steady. We're going to take care of the Black Lotus today. Um, Dyer and Kristen got all the new seacocks and um, through holes and everything. So we're going to lean the boat over using the halyards and um, get her like she's burying the rails sailing and we're going to put a heavy duty ratchet strap under the bow and crank it on either side of the dock to keep the bow up um, they're not that far into water so we actually did a test drive of this and it was it was fine it was pretty easy even with like the lightest sort of like testing so we're going to do that and then we're going to cut the old ones out and install the new ones so let's get to it technically what we're doing is called careening it's a technique that's been used for centuries in the age of sail people would purposely beach sailing vessels so that when the tide pulled out they could work on the bottom clean it repair whatever and uh, in more modern times it's commonplace to tie up next to a dock or the ultra sketchy method of tying anchors out in all directions and then letting the tide pull away while the boat's held up simply by its uh, ground tackle in, in four different directions. So what we're doing is not dangerous or invented by us, but a tried and true technique for working on a boat while it's still in the water. Okay, so we got the boat listed over, got the bungs exposed. The forward one is just barely exposed and we had a bunch of like boater parade cruise by creating a wake so we're going to try to work fast in case there's any more silliness happening. Um, I guess the next step now is I'm going to get in and cut the big one out and uh, we're going to go from there. So hopefully we can just cut it out from the inside. Unlike the boat yard where we cut them out from the outside it was it was easier because we we're standing below the boat and I don't want to risk damaging the hole at all so if we can cut it out from the inside that's the best bet for this so um, we're gonna use an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and a sawzaw if necessary but with that much corrosion it might just pop right out so time to get to that okay so I put ear protection in so I can't hear anything at the moment and goggles and here's our problem spot and I'm going to start, like I said, with a cutoff wheel and just try to cut at the base as much as possible and um, see if we can just get this thing to release. It's it's no access on the other side, really, so I might have to use the saws off of that bit. Um, so let's do it. Wow. Yeah, um, that's amazing. I'll show you when I get out. I'm used. There's nothing terrible to happen because we're out of the water. Oh, I got it on film. That's fucking awesome.
Okay, so there's that. So that was crazy that I just touched that this part and it just <laughs> it just came right right apart. It was insane. Well, let's go ahead and here's the bone. We're gonna go ahead and tap that out. It's coming. Okay. Now put your big, uh, your through hole in there and see if it fits. That's okay. You can get rid of that. Thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, go ahead and push it through. Turn it as you push it. I'm gonna need to tap it, James. Tap it with your, uh, here's this. How do you think? Wouldn't hurt, I don't know. Do we have any sandpaper handy? Should be fine. We're gonna load it up with Sika. Okay, so we're ready to install this first one. Now we're gonna put Sika Flex on the through hole, like you've seen us do at the boat yard, and um, load it up. And Dyer's gonna be out here feeding it in. I'm gonna be inside wrestling this, the nut into place, and then we screw on the the valve and uh, get it all lined up and then tighten it down from the inside since we're not using tri-flange it's a little bit easier to tighten down because Dyer can just be stationary and we don't have to turn it like we did all of ours with our tri-flange so um, let's get this thing sealed up and uh, keep the boat from sinking don't drop it now All right, time to go inside and do the rest of it.
It's okay. I think that's like you can let it spin. Okay, hold it for me. Ready? You ready? Yep. <sighs> okay, that's money. Yeah, I would. You can um, just wipe it off. Like, don't use a solvent. Just wipe it. Yeah. Okay. It's installed. That's awesome. So, she's all good. We're gonna let her kick off for like, I don't know, an hour before we lower the boat, and um, she'll be good to go. Now we can put her handle back on since we're done turning it. And uh, now we can quickly, we're going to try to raise the boat a little bit and get this forward small one a little bit more out of the water and uh, knock this one out too. We got the valve shut off, so that's good. Now we got to knock out this little one. We'll see. Should be easy now that we know the process and this one's smaller, less material um, and good access, which is the key to all of this. So um, let's go ahead and get this cut off and get this boat back in the water. Brutal glory hole. Yeah. Not yeah. Yeah, we're not, I don't think we're going to cut this one at all. Huh? That was way out of the way. Huh? That was way out of the way yeah. We have a lot more clearance. Okay, so we got our new through hole in. This one we don't have to trim, which is nice because it's a pain in the ass when you have to trim it. I put a bunch of seek on the bed. I'm putting some here for giggles, even though I don't need to. Okay, I'm screwing on the seacock. It might not turn because I torqued it kind of hard. Yeah. Yep. We're done. You can let it go. Okay, so we got them both installed. Um, now we gotta clean everything up. We're gonna wait an hour and uh, then put the boat back in the water. Check it out. There's the baby one. There's the big one. Pretty stoked. Beautiful hardware. Went smooth, and um, now the boat's not gonna sink. Not from these, anyway. Let's go out and look at the outside. The fittings are cracked. This is like everywhere I turn. So yeah, we lifted the boat with the uh, ratchet straps to get the bow up and create a cradle so it didn't move when wakes boats going by. And we took our, I'll show you our halyards up top to the other dock to get it listed. Let's check it out.
Now we're gonna sit and wait and let everything kick off and then lower it and see if she's taking on water. <laughs> okay, so time to set her back in the water. Dyer's probably gonna have a heart attack right now. And uh, we are going to show him that everything's perfect. Or we're gonna bring it right back out. Those are the options. Both of your seacocks are all the way in the water. Yeah, the water tight. The water tight, that's good. Everything's good. Black Lotus is back flat. I tried Taya, move back to her spot. Let's go in and check it out. How you feel, Dyer? Feel great. Much more at ease. Happy, happy. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Super stoked. It was, um, a job that took a lot of like small movements but it was pretty easy right yeah i mean we didn't went off kind of without a hitch there was never a moment where anyone was a little worried no and um nice. so now you know that if your through holes are shallow enough that's a way that you can do that if you don't have the money or you're not in a position or you're not in a location where you can haul out in an emergency and now those are done. He only has three more seacocks to change on the entire boat, and then all of his seacocks will be new. So, awesome. Super stoked. Moving Great. forward, getting the Black Lotus happy. Kristen and Dyer have started an Instagram account for the Black Lotus to document their restoration of this beautiful 1965 Choi Lee Frisco flyer. Head over and follow them to watch their progress, setbacks, successes, and future adventures. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. It helps us a lot. Thanks again to all of our patrons. Your contributions help us get the boat ready for big things. Until next time. <laughs>